Hi everyone, Kit here. I want to talk today about the problem of frozen shoulders. Now I know that in the rehab world that the category frozen shoulders covers a lot of different problems, but the one that we have found to be the most common and the one that responds to an exercise approach is actually a problem in supraspinatus, which is a muscle, one of the rotator cuff muscles, which is underneath this big muscle here and actually sits in a gutter on the top of the shoulder blade. And the point of mentioning this is that as you move the shoulder around like this, all four of the rotator cuff muscles go with the shoulder. And then the bigger muscles like pecs and lats and delts and so on, they act on the arm itself sitting in the shoulder joint. So that's just a brief cap, recap. So the problem of frozen shoulder, the most common version of it anyway, is when you ask someone to lift their arm up above their head like this or up out in front like this, they can't get it much above this point here. And also there's another sign which you'll see very often in the preparation for lifting the arm, the person will do this before they lift the arm up or they'll lean to the side, lift the shoulder and do that. And what's happening there is the reason people lean to the side is so they can use uh, the deltoid muscle to lift the arm out to the side. Now in classical anatomy this is what is supposed to happen. Supraspinatus is supposed to do the first 10 to 15 degrees, this part of the movement here, but if that muscle is compromised or switched off or its um, neural supply is compromised in some other way, then the person is unable to exert any force in this part of the range of movement and so what they do instead is lean to the side so they can actually use deltoid to do that and they shrug the shoulder in an, again in an effort to help the, prob the, the person overcome the problem of not being able to lift the arm straight out to the side. So today's video will have two parts. There's a stretching exercise that we can use that will stretch supraspinatus and then there's an activation exercise, a solo activation exercise which we can use to switch off the muscles which are currently doing the work and reactivate supraspinatus. Anyway, I'll explain more about this as we go on. So the stretching exercise is simple. You'll see here I've got the edge of a column and I'm going to put my arm behind my back like this and hold the edge of the column with my finger. So this is what this looks like. I reach behind me. I also back myself towards the wall so that my arm and shoulder and hand are roughly in the same plane. And then watch, I cheat my weight to this side, lean the body, and you'll see on this camera here how the arm is being pulled through the body. Don't let yourself unwind, just keep the back against the arm. And then watch, to pull the stretch on, without letting this part of the body move, I lean slightly towards this camera here. And that winds on the stretch straight away. And as with all of our stretching, get used to that sensation first so I can feel that the sensation has subsided now. Also make sure that the shoulder doesn't pull forward. I've actually, I'm actually pulling it backwards slightly as I do this. And so now the contraction. It's like pulling a bow but behind my back. So in this position here I use this hand to pull the edge of the column and I use my body strength and weight to resist that pull so nothing happens of course. All that happens is these muscles here and in here tense up and I stop, I reshift my weight further to this side here like this and then wind on the extra stretch. Oh, that's, a, that's perfect. And the beautiful thing about doing this solo version is that it's completely controllable. You don't need anyone else's assistance. You can dial in as much intensity or as little and also you can wait long enough for these things to all relax. So that's actually happened now. And I always recommend staying in the end position that you get to in any exercise for at least a few breaths in and out so the body can get used to the new position and reincorporate it into normal movement pattern. Okay, so that's the first part. To come out, I unwind by coming away from the wall. I shift my body this way. Ah, oh. then Something else we always do in the clinic is we ask the person to let their arm dangle down like this and then watch, draw little pictures. I drew a figure of eight then, figure of eight vertically and all the while the weight of the arm is actually pulling it out of the shoulder joint. Now I'll draw a circle in one direction, 
circle in the other direction and then this is the crucial part in order to move the arm up don't bring the arm out to the side or out to the front because they're the movement patterns that the person is anxious about instead ask your student to do this to bring the arm up the front like this and reach it up overhead like that and do that a few times and get used to it and then you can try whether or not the arm out to the side movement or out to the front is possible and if it's not possible let me show you the activation exercise which is the second part of this now I'm going to step slightly to the side and hope that the cameras don't lose sight of me and what I'm doing now is I've got this part of my hand against the inside of the column like this now the next steps are crucial. I'm going to use this muscle here, the pectoral muscle and latissimus dorsi, the muscle under the arm, to watch. Do this. Pull the arm down. Can you see? I'll just do it again and exaggerate slightly. I pull the arm down as hard as I can and you'll probably see some of the muscles of the neck standing out a bit and then and also these muscles have gone completely hard and then while the arm is pulled down I press it out to the side at the same time. So you're pulling the arm down and pressing it out to the side. Press, press, increase the pressure, press, 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 and stop. Then move the arm around and again try this action. For the vast majority of people we work with, as soon as this action is doable, then this action with the shoulder, you'll notice in the relaxed position, this action becomes possible as does this action. Now we're not saying that you can change a lifetime habit, um, you know, just in a few seconds, but the fact is in Vancouver, and we'll link to this other video in the description, in Vancouver I work with a woman who'd had frozen shoulders for I think it was 12 years, something like that, and had not, not been able to lift her arm up above this height for all that time. We ran through those two exercises where I was providing the resistance in both cases rather than using the column here and she was able to lift her arm up like this all the way up to here and then instantly was able to do those other two movements and she was shocked and I was too to be honest but nonetheless sometimes if you trigger the right uh, remaking of a neural pattern and loosen structures and switch structures off which the body has learned to use as a result of not being able to use the correct muscle, honestly, things that look miraculous can actually happen. So look, give that a try and please let us know if you find this helpful in the comments below. We really appreciate it. Thank you.